The topic of radio communications and specifically ham radio comes up sort of frequently in conversations about preparedness and prepping and survivalism. The uh, the general idea is that uh, it would be important to have a means of communication if there is no phone service, mobile networks, or internet, things like that. The most universal and accessible and certainly versatile radio communication method is ham, also known as amateur radio. Um, as far as uh, radio communications for civilian use, there's CB, there's ham, and there's a variety of other um, sort of personal band or family use uh, radio technologies. Ham is uh, offers the most uh, broad range of frequencies and uh, sort of versatility in how you can communicate with people, uh, including across a very long distance. Uh, while there's no license needed to listen to ham radio communications, to uh, transmit audio communications or otherwise over a amateur radio band, a license is needed. Uh, the caveat to that is in a legitimate emergency situation, life and death, uh, stuck in the woods, your survival depends on being able to communicate, you'll get a pass for transmitting on a, a ham band. But in general, a license is needed in order to transmit. Uh, there's three different licenses nowadays uh, that you can get as a ham, like, a ham radio operator. Uh, there used to be different classifications, but the current license structure uh, has three. The, the lowest level is called a technician class license. Um, it's the easiest to get. It lets you transmit on certain frequencies, um, mostly communication within North America. And there's some privileges on bands that would be used more for international communications. Uh, to get a license, you have to pass a 35-question test. And uh, in my opinion, anybody that's, I'll say, of average intelligence can study for and pass the technician license. Now, even if you don't end up wanting to be a practicing ham radio operator, I think it's a really good idea to get a ham radio license if you're interested in any kind of radio communication for before or after some kind of disaster. Uh, in, in, in studying for your ham radio technician class license, you're not only going to learn about how to operate a ham radio. Um, you're going to learn about radio theory. Um, yeah, ham radio rules and regulations and laws, certainly, uh, operating practices, but you're also going to learn about uh, electrical theory and basic circuit components and um, about a, a whole lot of other things as well. How uh, radio and light waves bounce around through the, the atmosphere and that sort of thing. It's, it's really interesting and I guess maybe if you're a bit of a nerd like me, then it will seem more interesting. Um, but if you've got no exposure to things like um, radio theory or electrical theory or any practical knowledge in either of those two areas, um, these are things you're going to learn through the, the, uh, the course of studying for the ham radio license. Uh, if you have any interest whatsoever in um, using radios for SHTF communications, this is really the way to go. It's the, it's the best place to start. Like I said, even if you don't end up wanting to be a ham radio operator, even if you don't end up wanting to take the test to get your, your license, it's really a great crash course in learning about radio communications in general. From there, you can go a different direction. You could buy a fully encrypted personal communication network that you, only you and your family will use. Completely up to you. Uh, but ham radio has been around for a very long time. There's a lot of great knowledge. There's still a lot of people that are using it. 
Um, there's ham radio clubs all around the country. In fact, many of these clubs will, uh, they operate classes to teach you the stuff you need to know for the ham license. And in, in most cases that I've seen, it's free of charge. They do it because they want to expand the uh, audience of this hobby. It's, it's not for, for profit or anything like that. It's just for the love of the, the hobby. Um, there's ham radio clubs that operate uh, just all over the place. And it might take seven or eight or ten classes to get through all the material. But if you learn better in a classroom setting, that's the way to go. For me, I bought the book, the, uh, the ARRL official uh, ham radio technician class study manual. Uh, it's a lot of material, but it's written pretty well in a pretty easy to understand sort of way. I'm not uh, an exemplary student. I'm not particularly great at studying for tests and things like that. But I was able to get through it pretty well. And then you can go online and take practice tests. You can take the practice test a hundred times if you want. And the, the real test that you'll take will um, have a selection of 35 questions from the, the general pool of questions. Uh, if you enjoy learning about uh, all of the things that you need to get a technician license and you want to take it a step further, you can get the uh, the next license, which is called the general license. It involves um, learning a lot more, a lot more in-depth stuff, but it allows you more operating privileges on more bands and modes. And then if you want to take it even a step after that, you can get what's called the amateur extra license. That's the highest level license for amateur radio. I don't know anybody that has that license. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that do, but for any practical purposes that I have, it's not uh, it's not really worth it to me. I'm interested in going for the general license. Currently, I only have the technician class. That's all I've really needed so far, unless you really want to get into some deeper stuff, international communications, that sort of thing. The technician license is going to do you pretty well, especially if you're looking at it as a communication method for your family or for your homestead or for your survival community. So to summarize, uh, why should you get your ham radio license? Number one, it's kind of fun and you get your own official FCC call sign. Um, number two, you're pretty much forced to learn a lot about radio communication and radio hardware. Number three, you're pretty much forced to learn a lot about electricity and electrical circuits. And number four, um, you can practice your off-grid or post-SHTF communications much more thoroughly if you don't have to worry about breaking the law by operating without a license. You can communicate with other people who have their licenses. You can take part in, in, in nets that take place. You can learn about um, the radio clubs in your area, or just get everyone else you know interested in it. Uh, so if you're looking at radio communication for uh, 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 some sort of post-collapse option to keep in touch, to keep connected with other people, it's pretty much the, I won't say it's the gold standard, but it's the no-brainer. That's the, that's the thing that you have to start with at least. From there, you can get a lot more fancy. Uh, and ham radios come a long way. There's a lot of people that uh, run software from their computer that's linked to their ham radio that sends data packets over the airwaves, much like the internet sends it over um, Wi-Fi and, and uh, wired connections. It's a lot slower. Uh, it's mostly for transmitting text, maybe some images, but we're talking about a ham radio internet. That's that's uh, it's kind of amazing when you think about it. I haven't gotten nearly into all that stuff yet, but it really fascinates me that if you have a ham radio uh, two counties over from me, and I've got a ham radio, and we've both got software hooked up to our computers that's hooked up to the radios, we could have our own internet. 
we are the internet, the ham radio internet. It's really interesting, and I think it's only going to get more advanced as time goes on. I haven't even scratched the surface, really. Um, so that's it. If you want to get started, you don't have to go out and buy a $1,000 ham radio. Um, a lot of people, like including myself, go with the cheap uh, Baofeng handheld radio and get some of the accessories, and you can you can learn a lot. You, if you really enjoy it and you want to go way into it, then invest some money in a, in a better radio. But to get started, the, the cheap Baofeng ham radio is, is great and you it'll do everything that you need to learn. So, so that's it. Um, if you have any thoughts about um, you know your experience with a ham radio or getting your license or, or any questions you have about the process, I can do my best to answer them. Let me know in the comments. And yeah, so that's it. Until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.